I worked for Retina for, for a while. I was a Retina, um, uh, a Retina affiliate with uh, the Retina photography, and so I photographed a lot of bands. I would get assignments to shoot basically everybody that came through town, and it was good for me because I was off Broadway, kind of a thing. So, like in a in a market like New York or L.A., a lot of people are clamoring to get at these people. But in Detroit, yeah. they're on a little more relaxed, and so I would get some really nice assignments here. You know, I shot Beastie Boys, I shot Pearl Jam, I shot. Just a lot of people, you yeah. know I mean? It's fun. A lot of them are looking at this little cabin over here. A lot of them are <laughs> stashed in slides in there now, you know, all the, yeah. the old days. You know, Red Hot Chili Peppers, yeah. a lot of stuff. It was fun. To, there were fun times. Yeah. Not real lucrative, but, you know, good to Well, do. a lot of the best gigs aren't, and yeah. that's... Uh, that's just the way it goes. just the way it goes. Yeah. Um, but during that time, were you still working on a fine art side? Were you shooting and documenting? Oh, yeah. Or when did, when did that really get going? Well, well, so you had your business, your editorial track, right. your corporate right. track. And, and I that, did well with that. It, yeah. was, it was very nice. I mean, for a while there, it was pretty lucrative and I could do other things. And, yeah. and I was always following that. You know, I always thought that it was my means to the end. And the end was my personal vision. Right. And so at the same time, I was working on a lot of that. You know, and, uh, But the problem being is that I... Living in Detroit and working for all these magazines and working, you know, I was working, you're working, you know how it is, you're yeah. always on. And so when do you when do you work on your own personal work? It's hard to do both. Yeah, so I'd lay in bed and I'd be, you know, I was real close to the Rouge plant and at night in Detroit, you know, it's quiet, you can hear things, but I could hear the Rouge off there. Every once in a while there'd be a slag pour and there'd be an explosion, boom, yeah. you know. And So it was close and it was omnipresent in my life and uh, I just decided, you know, I can photograph at night. That's when I can photograph. You yeah. know, I mean, I can't work during the day. I'll work at right. night. And that's when I started getting the uh, the whole night thing. Wow, it sounds like a truck's, you know. It's a Harley. Harley went by. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, you know, we're, um, that's what I did. That's when I had the time to work. So I used to work all day and then I'd And go you're to shooting Hasselblad for that stuff? Hasselblad, back on a, all that time. Yeah. yeah. Everything was square Hasselblad, 400 Tri-X. Yeah. And uh, I started realizing that shooting at night, that there was an infinite range of tones between black and white. Yeah. You know, I mean, so I just started to learn how to shoot at night. Like yeah. it was daylight. And it was fascinating. Just like you were saying in your talk last night is so many people see, they're not seeing things like that, you know? Right. And so it's a new way for them to see and they're very enamored by it. And it, well, early on, you know, nobody, uh, I, I started, I wanted to be a, 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 basically the Ansel Adams of Grand Rapids is what I really set out to do, but <laughs> I wasn't going to shoot landscapes. I wasn't yeah. interested in yeah. shooting landscapes, yeah. but I was interested in architecture. Right. And then I was just started shooting the city at night and it got more and more fascinating to yeah. me. And in those days, it was pre-internet and websites and Instagram and all that stuff, and and when you would show and present night photograph night photos of the city yeah especially with our river and the lighted bridges yeah. it blew people's minds it like did. they were like this is it really crazy did. and then it really uh, did. And then they that was really the only work that i sold consistently was to for lobbies and uh, yeah. conference rooms yeah. and a uh, hotel or something like that and but but I was just, did you have the same fascination with the idea of, I always call it just letting time build up on a single yeah. piece of film. Painting with light is what I used to yeah. call it. It's just like you let it lay down on there. And when your lens is open and things happen, magic happens. And you can start to predict that magic after yeah. a while once you've done it long. But yeah, that's the way it is, is that you're, you're building up things and you're, you're able to see things and able to put things on film that people can't see with their naked eye. Yeah. Although they're there and you're... It's hard for me to explain it, but it's like it's like innately there. You all, there's just something about it when you see it. Yeah, it really resonates with yeah. you, and it still to this day does. You know, I mean, I look at some of my earlier work around Detroit, and it raises the hair on my arms because it's yeah. just. It's not because they're great photographs. It's just I remember the time of doing yeah. it. You know, they're great photographs. Oh well, thank you. <laughs> thank you. It's really nice for you well, to say are. that. No, but but yeah. that's what it morphed into. Is that I just started yeah. doing that, and then I just had the night time to work, and then I just expanded out through the city. Yeah. 